Hi, I'm The Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Knitting. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to episode 13 of The Mitten on Knitting. There's 99 days to Rhinebeck, so let's see what I've been up to. In Loose Threads this week, the big news is I finally got the citric acid soak uh, done. I was planning to do it last week, but with all the things going on for the garden tour, which went very well, thank you very much for asking, I didn't get around to it. So what I did was exactly what I outlined in the Ravelry group. I dissolved a teaspoon of citric acid in hot water in a quarter cup of hot water and I added one quart of 95 degree Fahrenheit minus a quarter cup of water plus the citric acid dissolved in the quarter cup of water in a bowl and then I put in the skein of gradient fail to fiber yarn and uh, I pressed it down to saturate it with the water and let it sit for 30 minutes. I took the yarn out of the water, pressed out excess water, wrapped it in saran wrap, put it in the microwave for a minute, refilled the bowl with the non with clean non-acidified 95 degree water. I took the yarn out of the microwave, out of the saran wrap, put it back into the bowl and let it soak f- for five minutes and then I removed the yarn out of that clean soaked water and pressed out the excess water, wrapped it in new saran wrap, put it back in the microwave for another minute and then when it came out I refilled the bowl with clean 95 degree water and put the yarn in it and let it soak for a final five minutes removed the yarn out of the water and pressed out all the excess water and it totally worked. There's absolutely no felting took place. There was no dye running all over the place. Um, It was nice and clean and lovely and I took pictures of every single step and I put it up on the The Mitten on Knitten Instagram feed which also cross feeds over to Facebook and Twitter. So if you don't have Instagram uh, you can go ahead and look at it on Facebook and Twitter. And I was just so very, very happy uh, that it worked out well. And so I decided since that worked so well, I would go ahead and do the Icelandic um, yarn. And I finished uh, a, a finished object from Hipstring's Gerber Daisy uh, and do them in the same bath because I wanted You know, if there's no bleeding, why worry about putting an orange-red in with a light pink, right? So I repeated the process with both of those items in the same bath, and it totally worked. I was so, so happy. That's what happened in Loose Threads this week. It worked out well, and uh, I recommend it. If if you don't want your colors to bleed out a little bit, um, totally do the citric acid soak so it works and it was pretty easy and even Mr. Mitten wasn't uh, freaking out about the mess that I made in the kitchen because it really didn't make a huge mess so there you have it in what's fit in the mitten this week this week since I was off work uh, to work on the garden tour and I was working out in gardens I really didn't wear a lot of uh, knitwear, mostly because I was getting covered in exciting things like mulch and compost and lots of dirt. Anyway, but I did manage to get some sock wearing in, which was really important to my feet. It made them happy for those uh, couple occasions where I dressed up and looked nice. And then on the day of the tour itself, I was really happy to have my socks on because even though it was bright and sunny out, it was windy and chilly. So it it would be okay if one was out walking in the garden, but I ended up minding the table, so I was a little bit cold 
which of course Mr. Mitten had to laugh at me about, but that's perfectly fine. My feet were appropriately temperatured because I was wearing my hand knit socks. Um, so that's what's fit in the mitten. What have I been knitting? This week I was knitting the sock of many heels uh, as I was driving Mr. Mitten around to one location or the other. And I worked a very little bit on the sweater, the Rhinebeck sweater, mostly because I'm at a transition point in the pattern. I want to make sure that I don't mess up. But the other thing is I needed something I could pick up and drop and pick up and drop as I was uh, driving because, you know, it's it's hard to knit and drive at the same time. And, uh, you know, like texting and driving, knitting and driving is not recommended. So that's what I was knitting, really, just the sock of many heels. Oh, and then I knitted a um, pillow cover from the finished uh, Hip Strings Gerber Daisy spin, uh, which came out really nicely, and it's uh, drying on the drying on the rack, actually. There, so there you have it. What have I been spinning this week? I've just been working on the merino on the drop spindle to get that finished up, and uh, I think... All toll, I think I spun almost an entire foot, so it really hasn't been my focus. And I do need to finish that up and um, get that uh, skeined out and uh, spawed and ready to go because the batch that I did on the spinning wheel is all done. So once that's done, that'll be both skeins ready for that competition and then the scarf is ready for the competition item piece and so then the only thing that will remain having to be done is um, the sweater and uh, hopefully a pair of socks to go with it so that's what I've been spinning and it's really pathetic and lame how little it is, but like I said, and like I've been saying, Garden Tour was uh, my priority this week, and now that it's done, I can get back to focusing on Rhinebeck, and all things Rhinebeck, woohoo! So what's finished this week? Well, I skeined up a cake of the Hipstrings Gerber Daisy that really lovely orange yellow spin that I did and um, caked that up and brought that with me on the day of the tour because I knew I would be sitting for a lengthy period of time and I knit up a a pillow um, pillowcase cover I had um, what I did when I scanned it up is I caked up the entire ball and then I took both ends of it, the inside and outside end, and I pulled it back and caked that way so it was like a double double thickness of yarn. And then when I got to the center, um, the very middle of the length of the skein, I tied a, a piece of fiber there to, to mark the middle. And then I untangled the entire big mess that I had just made by doubling all the fiber up and uh, re-caked it again and so what, when I knit the, the pillow case cover I did it like the center of the hap shawl so I did a yarn over and then knit and then knit across and you know and then the very last stitch you knit through the through the back loop and you flip it, you do your yarn over, uh, knit all the way across and then through the back loop until you get all the way to the middle marker and then at that point you do your yarn over and then I did a slip slip knit and knit across and then um, four stitches before the end I knit the two stitches together and then knit and knit through the back loop to maintain the um, maintain that loopy 
open work on the edge. And it came out uh, pretty nice, I think. So uh, it's been caked up. I'm sorry, caked up, right? It's been through its citric acid wash, and it is drying as we speak. So um, I'll get the uh, other half of that pillow sewn onto it. I'm stuck between doing like some kind of brown for the backing, or I have this really pretty yellow. One of the two. I haven't decided. Um, probably I'll go with the yellow, mostly because it's uh, sitting out on the sofa and uh, easy, easily in reach. But whichever I decide, I'll, I'll be having a, a nice, comfortable pillow. And uh, so that's finished. And uh, so is the citric acid wash for the um, gradient spin fail too, and the Icelandic pink lemonade, which is going to turn into a wisp scarf. So, finished things. I like it. And now a word not from a sponsor. Hip strings brings together modern support spindles, fiber, and the spinners who love them. With custom blends inspired by the coast of Maine to their cocktail hour collection inspired by, well, being parents, working, life in general, Hip Strings offers rich, saturated colors and fiber blends to quench your spinner's thirst. Stop by and visit them at hipstrings.com for the perfect summertime porch spinning companion. In Stash Up Down this week, I'm still waiting for the sock yarn to come through the post office, but it hasn't. Now, I didn't get to the post office on Saturday because garden tour, so it might have been there then, but <sighs> it's so disappointing when you purchase something and you think it'll be there within like two days, and it's been over two weeks, and I still don't see it. But hopefully that'll be there, and uh, there you have it. So that would be my stash up. As far as stash down, the hip strings Gerber Daisy is down and out of my stash. So I need to update my stash on Ravelry. But that is done, 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 and to, as far as I'm concerned, finished object. Um, so, yay! Uh, I believe that was uh, four ounces also, which is even better. Okie dokie. In where I want to be this week, well, I haven't even given that any thought. Everything's been moving so fast, and there's been so much to do with the garden tour. Did I mention the garden tour? I seem to be talking about it a lot, even though it's finally over for the year. I, I didn't even think of where I wanted to be, you know, it was just like, get up in the morning and go, 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 and come home at night, do what I got to do with the dogs, and crash, and then do it all over again the next day. So, maybe where I want to be is just sitting outside on the porch, watching the grass grow. Maybe that's where I should want to be for the next week or so, just to just to rest up from everything. Yeah, that's where that's that's where I want to be outside, sitting on a swing, watching the grass grow. In grabby pause this week, I really wasn't looking for a knitting, a specifically knitting or spinning related object. I ended up looking for a printer things I want but won't necessarily get. Well, this I actually got. I got a new HP printer. And I just, I'm mentioning it because, you know, a lot of people look at the quality of the print that comes out or the speed of the print that comes out. And they're all pretty equal in the, you know, home down and dirty printers, color printers that they have these days. So my criteria was the price of the toner refills. I got the HP because I find that they last at least three or four years. As a matter of fact, the printer that I killed lasted 
10 years. And I, I know I couldn't believe it myself when I, when I found out. But 10 years for that printer. So I got another HP and uh, I got a toner ink that's going to be reasonably priced which is uh, really, I think, these days the, m the most important pri criteria you can have when selecting a printer. That's that for Grabby Paws, and um, there you have it. In tow this week, I got nothing. I didn't make any um, mistakes in my knitting, probably because... I really didn't do anything complicated in knitting other than stockinette and uh, the hap uh, pillow cover. Um, it was really just knit stitches, a couple yarn overs, decreases, nothing major, nothing really um, goofed up, and the only thing this does is fill me with dread and fear for next week. Uh, when I'll be going back to uh, knitting the sweater on the train uh, on my way to work. So, oh, do There's going to be one coming. I just feel it. Uh, oh, dear. All right, um, but none this week. For where I'll be this week, this week, of course, is town board meeting week, um, so I'll be there on Thursday. But other than that, I will be home. Mr. Mitten has agreed uh, to help me um, set up the little video studio because on Saturday uh, we'll be doing the video cast recording with Mr. Homestead Hobbyist himself. Uh, Ken will be... Um, I don't know if we're Skyping yet or what. I am going to look that up today and figure out how to do it. But um, where I'll be is I'll be setting up a studio, and we will go ahead and do the recording interview with uh, Ken, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So that's where I'll be. So here's a special thing. Uh, if you're on the Ravelry group, you already know, because I posted this up uh, about five days ago, but in four days, oh my goodness, two hours and 41 minutes, give or take, Ken, Mr. Homestead Hobbyist, Comus himself, our very first NAS sponsor, has agreed to do an interview on the podcast, woohoo, even though I've never interviewed anyone on this podcast, like, ever, uh, anywho. Uh, we're going to do a video interview, which we will simulcast onto YouTube so we can see all of his goodies, roving people were talking about fiber here, and he's got a special pattern that we're going to get for a knit along, which should be totally fun because I hear it's something, some would something someone would wear on one's hands, which I'm very fond of, and I just happen to have a little bit of gradient uh, fiber ready for that project. Um, so it's Ken, simulcast, vidcast, roving, yarns, more, and a knit along. What's not to love, aside from my interviewing skills. Um, so I started a thread on the Mitten on Knitten podcast group forum on Ravelry, and um, put your questions there. Uh, let me know what I should be asking him. And, of course, if you're not on Ravelry, which you should, totally should be because it's tons of fun, but if you want to send them through Facebook or some other medium, go go feel free. Um, I try to monitor everything uh, social media-wise. Um, so however you want to get the question to me, please do. And uh, we'll get it out there and... Uh, so that's the exciting something special that's going to be happening in just a few days. Yay! In contest winners, um, for contest number two, you didn't know there was a contest, contest winner was Marika16. Her prize has been ordered, and due to Canadian shipping and everything, there's drama going on there. But the vendor is graciously 
dealing with all of that trauma so I don't have to, which I thought was really fabulous of him, hint, hint. So I pulled the contest, the June You Didn't Know There Was a Contest Contest winner out of the sock thread by the random number generator, which picked post number six. Um, so congratulations. Uh, go out to Marika16 on that fabulous win and of course for all of her fabulous socks that she's been making lately because I'm totally jealous. She just like churns them out like they're nothing. Um, but anywho, uh, so you didn't know there was a contest contest winner. Yay! In questions for the mitten this week, I didn't have any formal questions so I wanted to answer one by Mr. Mitten himself. He wanted to know if I was ever going to write down the recipe for my arugula penne pasta salad. And the answer is yes, I've written it down. We have a farmer's market a grocery store. It's like um, a whole bunch of farmers came together and they rented out a grocery store to have uh, to sell from. So it's a um, farmer's market every day of the week. And they make a wonderful arugula penne pasta salad. Unfortunately, um, which Mr. Mitten loves, unfortunately I went to purchase the salad and they had run out, which just would not do. So I decided that I would uh, figure out how to make it myself. Fortunately, being a farmer's market, they kind of actually use real ingredients so they're listed on the ingredient list so here's what you do you take a you make a pound of penne pasta he likes it al dente so I cook it to al dente and then drain that out it doesn't have to be a hundred percent drained out but ninety nine percent is good <clears throat> then two two big uh, toss that in a bowl uh, with about uh, tablespoon or so of olive oil. Coat the pasta with the uh, olive oil. Then two big bunches of arugula. Wash it. Chop it up. Um, that's about six cups of arugula, not not tightly packed. You want there to be a bit more arugula than pasta. It's, um, it's not a pasta salad with arugula sprinkled about. It's an arugula salad with pasta in it. Then a uh, half a cup of toasted pine nuts, a half a cup of Julienne's sun-dried tomatoes. Include the juice. If you get it in a jar, toss the juice into the bowl as well. Six scallions uh, chopped up. A tablespoon of crushed garlic, pepper, uh, I use about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, another quarter cup of olive oil, um, four tablespoons of ginger dressing, like Japanese ginger dressing, and um, that's it. Oh, and salt, of course. That's it. Just toss it together and um, serve it warm or cold. Either way it works. It lasts in the refrigerator about a week. <laughs> if Mr. Mitten isn't around, otherwise it only lasts a few days because uh, <laughs> he'll eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that's, um, that's how you make arugula penne pasta salad. And uh, if you want to give it a try, uh, please do. And uh, I'd love to hear what you think of it. There you have it. There it is. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.
99 sheep with fleece in the field, 99 sheep with fleece. Bring one near, give it a shear, 98 sheep with fleece in the field.